Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today, Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you this morning. Good morning, Dr. Paul. Are you freezing yet? <laughs> Not yet. Boy, I sure wished I was in Iowa so I could campaign. <laughs> I do remember one time, one interview in Iowa. Uh, they showed the Capitol building, and I remember there was like a patio out there, and they were doing interviews on it. And I can remember, and I hated wearing overcoats. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I think the media was against me. Could that be possible? No, they had me out on. there and they were testing me. How long is he going to stay out here while the coat on? <laughs> but I, I was pretty cold. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, good, uh, good memories and some, some uh, shaky memories about uh, yeah. having been there yeah. one time. But it's uh, something I, I'm thinking about making a prediction. I'm very cautious uh -huh. on prediction. I think Trump's going to win. I think Trump's going to win big. Yeah, He'll probably win. <laughs> but the real winner has to be the people eventually. And I think they're, they're down on the list. Yeah. You know, I think this bipartisanship and sharing in on the spending and 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 planning wars. You know, it's it's so sad. Even. Even the war planning where we had, we were a little bit more hopeful that the yeah. Republicans would stand up to, you know, this constant war monitoring stuff. But in, anyway, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what's going on with uh, Bidenomics uh, involved with foreign policy. But I thought, I had to stop and think, how, how does this work? Uh, how do these uh, air, air strikes and what he's doing help? inflation. <laughs> thought, well, this is going to make inflation worse, isn't it? But uh, then again, and from their viewpoint, uh, it's to me rather bizarre because they're saying, well, what's going on over now, over there now is interfering with, tr with uh, traveling, tra trade and the yeah. shipping, which is true. And which is true, that pushes prices up. But what is not true is that's not the fundamental understanding of inflation. Yeah. They think they think it's uh, a reflection, but it, it's interrelated <clears throat> because, and that's what happens frequently, is when prices start to go up, they would uh, they, they don't say, well, they print too much money. A lot of people are saying that more now than they used to. And it is related, but uh, they'll they'll tie it in and say, well, that profiteering, those businessmen are doing it, the bankers are doing it, but it's never the Fed, it's never the Congress that uh, allows the uh, Federal Reserve to do it. So uh, that that is their bizarre. So they're trying to t talk us into saying, well, this is actually a very good thing. Yeah. But I don't I don't think uh, I, I don't think Biden's numbers went up over the weekend. Uh -huh. I don't think that. That uh, binomics, uh, anybody believes in any of that stuff, but but it, but in a, in a way, all that mishmash is generally what we hear. My, uh, there we have different people proposing these silly notions, and as long as the country is wealthy enough and they have enough savings involved, and the country can pass out welfareism to the rich and poor. People tolerate a lot, and I think why they don't get away with it now, even though the targets are very easy, yeah. you know, the administration, very easy. The, the main reason is, is uh, there's not as much stuff to pass out, you know, like there's nothing. Yeah. Every time they spend a nickel, they have to borrow it, and now they have to borrow enough money to pay the interest on what they have already borrowed. And uh, I don't think they have the vaguest notion how serious this is. But time will tell, and I hope we're just all way off track and completely wrong. <laughs> but I'm afraid that the people who have argued Austrian economics and sound money and warned us about this all the way back, to especially 1971 or even to 1913, it would end badly. And I think uh, that, unfortunately, is what's happening. It's ending badly, and it's coming together. It's the loss of the reserve currency. It's the loss of our empire. At the, at the same time, we're flat out burned. And that's why they're trying to come up with all this gimmickry. Yeah, I know. It's the old canard that war is good for the economy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know? That's the old and saying. I, I didn't make a clip, and I, I just slipped my mind, but uh, you're referring to this Yahoo Finance piece over the weekend that said the, the title is, um, uh, what is it? U.S. airstrikes target inflation, too. Yeah. So they're putting a positive <laughs> spin on the fact that we're spent, I don't know how many millions, hundred million dollars, who knows how much, attacking Yemen, a tiny country with no real military, just sort of militias. But I think we hit them at least twice now, maybe uh, three times. The UK and France have joined in. 
And, of course, the media is all for it. Hey, it's going to be great for inflation. Uh, war is good for inflation. But let's take a look at the airstrikes over the weekend, if we can start with that first clip. I described this at random. Houthis vow strong response after second round of U.S.-U.K. strikes on Yemen. Uh, they hit, I think, six or seven targets on Thursday night, came back on Friday and hit the airport in Sana'a uh, and... Uh, I guess France has joined in as well. Uh, the Houthis have been, as our viewers probably know, have essentially shut down shipping traffic in the Red Sea because they have vowed to block any ships that go into or out of Israeli ports because they support the Palestinians and they're opposed to what's going on in Gaza. And so they have the, uh, the geographic ability because of the unique geography of the region they're at a real chokehold point i should have put up a map to where they can affect that and i wanted to just uh, do a couple of reactions to the u.s airstrikes because i think and and you do too because you wrote about it this week one of the dumbest things that the administration's ever done well let's turn to our friend david stockman who has a good piece on antiwar.com today i think he breaks it down fairly well in the next um little clip he makes a point that i think you would make the Red Sea is not the Gulf of Mexico, Long Island Sound, or the Gulf of Catalina, meaning that the Houthi blockade on ships heading to Israel in retaliation for the latter's genocidal assault on Gaza is Jerusalem's business to treat with, not Washington's. Moreover, Stockman writes, the U.S. Navy has not been hired by the U.N. or any other global body to safeguard every sea lane on the planet, nor should it take the assignment if offered, because the homeland security of America does not depend on Washington functioning as the gendarmerie of the world. You know, this idea that if you have a lot of money and a lot of planes and uh, you, you want to achieve some political, uh, geopolitical uh, uh, success, uh, frequently the bombing does the perverse thing. It, it, uh, it brings people together who are being bombed. The bombs aren't as effective. Of course, uh, there's exceptions to that. But the, uh, here, here's an article on anti-war. It says, Houthi's offensive capabilities not damaged by U.S. air. Yeah. But what, what, did, what did we spend that money on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a lot of money. And now, we're, now you know, you say, well, good. Now they've used up their weapons. They won't be able to start a war. Well, they plan the wars anyway. It'll be an emergency. And then more money will have to be. We have to make an exception. $34 trillion of debt it's not relevant it's just relative to it's not it's just, it's just temporary we'll, we'll print more money and the yeah. people will suck it in and and take care of it well there's always a limit and that's why that's why is this is so so messy and this is why i think the political structure in this country is so mixed up you know uh, uh you, you know there's there's uh, nobody has a concise uh, set of beliefs where they can say well these are these are the principles we believe in there was a time that they hinted and they still hint to it they say well the unifying uh, issue is we all take the oath to the constitution and we all obey the constitution in according to our own personal biases yeah. that's the problem well we covered the war uh, for a number of years we covered it closely when the saudis were attacking yemen uh, and it was a horrible war uh, but you had at the end of the day the saudis had the most the latest american equipment they spent a fortune on it Yet they lost to this, quote, ragtag army, the Houthis. They lost. They sued for peace. There was a peace. So the idea that the Saudis could not defeat the Houthis now uh, has been lost on the Biden administration because they have, I would argue, and many others have argued, they've fallen into a trap. They believe that they will de-escalate in the region by attacking the Houthis, when in fact many people argue that that's exactly what the Houthis wanted. They wanted the U.S. to attack. And here's a great article. Bernard at the Moon of Alabama has a great piece that I definitely recommend, moonofalabama.com. I took out a couple of excerpts where Bernard quoted, in this first quote, if you can put it up, this is from the New York Times, and I think it's making a very good argument. Uh, they said, analysts who study the Houthis, I'll go back one if you can, uh, analysts who studied the Houthis said that the American-led airstrikes could play into the group's agenda 
and might be unlikely to stop the group's attacks. Well, we'll follow up on that in a second. And this is a senior research official at the ARCA group. This was not a miscalculation by the Houthis, said Hannah Porter, a senior researcher. This was their goal. They hope to see an expanded regional war, and they're eager to be on the front lines of this war. Uh, end quote. And it goes on, burn, uh, the New York Times goes on to say, Within hours of the first wave of strikes, a senior Houthi official, Mohammed al Bukhaiti, said that the United States and Britain would soon realize they had engaged in the biggest folly of their history. I would say this Houthi spokesman is probably right. If you go to the next one, he's quoting, uh, Bernard is quoting uh, uh, further in this piece, uh, a Laurent Bonafoy, a researcher who studies Yemen at Sciences Po in Paris, said the, the Houthis, this is the strike that they were looking for. And this is a quote from this expert. They're gaining what they want, which is to appear the boldest regional player when it comes to confronting international coalition. And there's a lot here to read, and if you want to read it, you probably should. But to, to, to summarize it, Dr. Paul, Biden, in attacking the Houthis, he didn't do significant damage because they don't have a military base. They don't have a Pentagon there in Sanaa where you can hit. They have caves. They have tunnels. They have weapons that are smuggled in. Uh, they have a, a, a capacity of shutting down that strait. They gave the Houthis exactly what they wanted, which is to turn them into a mayor, major player and the only country that has really stepped up physically to challenge the Israeli attack on Gaza. So he played right into their hands. Hey, you know, it, it, this is not isolated. This is not a new uh, invention of, of our foreign policy. Because I was just thinking as we were talking here that, you know, the Houthi thing is, uh, is designed and broadcast is going to do certain things and ends up doing the opposite uh, or not, no, no good at all anyway. But, but are things much better in Ukraine? I mean, you, yeah. you could a lot of the conditions that you just described, you could apply to Ukraine. How many times? How many times have we bombed them? How much? Yeah. There's even more money in lives. Just think of the lives lost up there. But what? What about? Uh, what, what? What about the Palestinian-Israeli uh, uh, war going yeah. on? Uh, and we can't dock the responsibility yeah. there either. But we're participants. We promote this because that's the job of an empire. And that's why, you know, in many ways, people think this is un-American, but I think I feel very comfortable with it. I do not think uh, the American empire has anything to do with protecting personal liberty and making us a better country. And it's a trap. There's, right now, there's nothing Biden can do. He was talked into, I don't know, uh, uh, Austin from his hospital bed somehow pushing buttons. He was talked into, let's send some missiles over to the Houthis and let's bomb them and they'll back down. Well, they haven't backed, they didn't back down against the Saudis. <laughs> They're not gonna back down. So the only thing, there are two choices left for Biden. He can say, well, that didn't work, you know, too bad. <laughs> or he can escalate. And that's exactly what the Israelis want, of course, because they, and we'll talk about this later, they want to make this America's war, but it's also what the Houthis want. And I think it was in the Moon of Alabama article where Bernard pointed out that you know, after this this uh, peace with Saudi Arabia recently, and this sort of uh, a little bit of peace in the region, well, it was a little bit of a problem in Yemen because the uh, the Al Ansar uh, coalition uh, that was running uh, Yemen, I probably I probably mispronounced that, but led by the Houthis, they were having a hard time delivering the goods. Their popularity was waning. People were frustrated. They've been through a bunch of war. Things weren't improving on the economy. They were getting more unpopular. Now, all of a sudden, they were attacked by the biggest power on earth, and they withstood it. The popularity shot straight up. The day the U.S. bombed them, they had a million people in the capital demonstrating. All of a sudden, everyone's saying, <laughs> Viva Houthis, you know, they love them. So it served the, the purpose of the Houthis in Yemen. It served Israel's purpose, the only people whose purpose it did not serve was the American people, <laughs> yeah, right? That's right. You know, I, I think the expression that we 
get from our president <laughs> is, <laughs> is amazing. It's sort of a, a, an expression of total unawareness of, of, you know, you hear the words, you hear the intent, but all, you, all I see is the confusion that his uh, mind isn't connecting with, uh, with reality. <laughs> and uh, he, th there, there's a staring. But I get to, to thinking that, um, you know, he's been around, I think he's been in Washington maybe 50 years plus. And, and it's almost like, like the brain starts working differently, yeah, you know, <laughs> because you can self-deceive oneself. A lot of people do that in a small sort of way, and they're deceived into thinking, oh, if I only do this, it's going to work out. But that's, that's trial and error of human nature. You try something, I thought it was going to work, but you, 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 sort of, you sort of laugh about it, cook yourself, or you change to it. But this is, this is something different now. You know, it's, it's, it's just this, uh, this attitude that, uh, <coughs> that this is not that, that serious. And this whole idea that I'm behind on the polls, no, that, that's not true. Yeah. I mean, the, the, polls have, the polls have been wrong before. And uh, it's oblivion, they, 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 but uh, I, I don't worry about it because I think that uh, I try to prepare people and tell them there's an alternative because eventually the truth comes out and it's, it's, it leaks out now. I think, I think that's one of the reasons, uh, you know, as the economy deteriorates and the foreign policy deteriorates, uh, the uh, popularity of the president goes down. But uh, it, it, it is a system that uh, <clears throat> when the truth comes out, uh, and I think that that is what's happening and that's why we do have uh, bits and spurts of people supporting our position of saying, you know, it's time we just minded our own business. Let people spend their money and let the government uh, just forget about the government spending our money and uh, we would be better off, the world would be better off too because we wouldn't be fighting these wars. Yeah, and then people will say, well, hang on a minute. Uh, they're disrupting shipping. They, uh, it really it does uh, is against our interests. Well, uh, that is a fact. They are doing that and they're able to do that. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is they're doing it in response to the Israeli attacks on Gaza. And who's facilitating the Israeli attacks on Gaza? We are. It's like the old, the old story we keep telling over and over again when we were in the committee hearing. And they said, well, they're shooting at our planes <laughs> yeah. without saying, well, our planes are bombing them. You know, so that's the result. And I think aside from anything else, even if you think that uh, they deserve some punishment, the fact is it's not going to work and it's not working. And I would offer Exhibit A and I was just reading about this, there's been an 80% drop in revenue at the Israeli port of Eilat due to shipping companies refusing uh, to go through the Red Sea. So it's crippling the Israeli economy, the Houthis' actions are. And secondly, they are not deterred. In fact, they are encouraged by U.S. strikes. And put this next clip up because this just happened uh, a little bit before we started this show. Breaking, Houthis hit a U.S. container ship. And Lord Bebo on Twitter X uh, commented, the fact that they hit it will for sure signal other ships not to cross the Red Sea. As a reminder, the Houthis' goal is to stop the flow of Israeli-linked ships, not to sink them. They're trying to stop commerce in and out of Israel. The U.S. Navy, Lord Bebo continues, was not able to prevent this. It's a pure gamble uh, for civilians the, the, uh, in the ships. CENTCOM reported the attack uh, at 4 p.m. on the 15th, which is today. Now that's Exhibit B. Now here's Exhibit C. Uh, if you go to the next one, Qatar has announced that it will halt all gas shipments in the Red Sea due to the Houthi attacks. So Qatar is out of the game. And the U.S. is even admitting that these attacks on Yemen are not serving to dissuade the, um, the Houthis. Go to the next one. The U.S. admits it. This came out just today, and here's a tweet from Zero Hedge. U.S. warns its ships to avoid the South Red Sea until further notice. U.S. warns its merchant ships of potential for Houthi retaliation. Well, hang on a minute. That wasn't supposed to happen. We we're supposed to scare them and cow them. No, it looks like we're emboldening them. Well, it looks like it's, a, it's going to be a challenge to Biden's understanding of inflation yeah. because he's going to need a lot more bombs yeah. in order to clear the area and, and free up shipping over there, uh. not realizing that we're 
involved very much in participation of the whole mess over there, uh, both money-wise and interference uh, with uh, with trade around the world. You yeah. know, with with our attitude about sanctions and our attitude about uh, you, you know p penalties and us uh, uh, telling people what to do and if they don't do what we do. Yeah. We use bombs, yeah. which don't work. Which make, don't work. They make it worse. Yeah. Make things work. Worse. So, the, um, also, on Netanyahu, I found an interesting little statement here uh, that uh, Netanyahu tells Blinken, this is also your war. <laughs> and I can remember being in Congress and, uh, you know, Netanyahu has been around and I think, I'm pretty sure he, when I was there, Netanyahu has been to the Congress for a lot of time. Yeah. It, but it's always bothered me back then and it, more so as we go on because because we had Zelensky there. It's almost, I, I feel uh, like it's an invasion yeah. to be able to go down there and, and they get uh, more more time on the floor than I could get. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and they get just talking and there, nobody's interrupting them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Netanyahu's been there, but now uh, he said uh, he, he, he was he was ta talking to Blank and he says, this is not just our war. It is also your war. This is the war of the sons of light against the sons of darkness. Uh -huh, sons and of darkness. Uh, that clarifies everything. So now that we we understand that. But he is right. Give him a, a plus on telling the truth, but what is he going to do about it? He gets an F because he's going to flunk what the policy ought to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. You're right. He gets some. He gets some credit for telling the truth. You can't blame Netanyahu in a way, though. If you pick some fights and pick, you walk into a big bar and start a fight with someone. If you know there's going to be someone behind your back who's going to take on the fight, then you know you're going to be very bold. He told the truth, but this is the kind of language that he's used throughout this <coughs> war. And I find it to be chilling language because I'm not going to, hearkening back to events in history, this is how things were framed. A certain people were intrinsically evil and needed to be eliminated. And this is how Netanyahu sounds. The sons of light against the sons of darkness. It does <laughs> remind me of leaders in Europe several decades ago who framed it that way. It's, it's a very, very bad idea to frame uh, fellow human beings in a way that they're sons of darkness. He used the term Amalek, which was a justification for the slaughter. So it's, it's a very bad move. Of course, he can do what he wants, obviously, but they're suffering a lot of, of losses, the Israeli, the IDF is. I think I saw something like 6,000 severely, severely um, wounded and handicapped by this. But nevertheless, you're right. This is your war, too. You gave us the money. You gave us the weapons. You got our back. You're attacking the Houthis for us. Uh, you know, you're in it too, and it's, uh, I think we'd argue it's not in our interest. You know, there's another, another time here that uh, Netanyahu speaks a half-truth. Netanyahu also took issue with uh, South Africa's charges of genocide, yeah. uh, genocide and uh, because it's before the International Court of, of Justice right now. And uh, I don't think uh, globalism and internationalism even the League of Nations didn't do too well, the United Nations and NATO and all this stuff. It, it just doesn't work. But uh, no one will uh, stop it at the hey, not to the axis of evil, do not, uh, are, and not anyone else that he's talking about, who's, Netanyahu is talking about that. So the, uh, the, 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 these, these meetings there and these charges, and once again, you know, there are some people who are talking about genocide, but, but are, are the two factions going to sort it out? But, you know, the, it seems like uh, this, is, this is a big issue, and I don't believe that it just w was discovered a week ago yeah. or a month ago. I think uh, this has to have been smoldering for a long time, of what the real goals are and have been, and certainly in recent times. Because uh, there's been biases. I, f I figure the interference in that area, if you eliminated all the interference by the Europeans and the Americans since uh, World War I, all the way through, I bet they'd have worked things out differently. Yeah. And they have, and the, there's been examples where, where they have worked things out when people don't uh, take charge and they come from 6,000 miles away to tell them what they should be doing. And like you say, if, if, uh, if Netanyahu knows we're there with the money and the bombs and whatever, uh, he's going to be very bold. 
and uh, that's why bankruptcy is going to be good. Uh, yeah. They'll have to back off on this, and but it's also going to be very messy, and that's what we'd like to prevent. Well, we were talking before the show about, you know, right after the attacks on October the 7th, there was pretty much worldwide sympathy for Israel. I mean, they were attacked. They lost a number of citizens. Now, not as many as they claim, probably a few hundred. But there was worldwide condemnation of the Hamas attacks. And that quickly turned to horror when you had, yes, a few hundred maybe Israeli civilians killed in the attack. And people were horrified when the retaliation was 25,000 civilians in Gaza. And so they had the sympathy of the world. They squandered it with this wildly disproportionate retaliation. And now we're here we, here we are in this situation. And it opens up the door for those people who have a conspiracy of yeah. why this is going, going on. You know, whether it's 9-11 or whether there always will be another th uh, theory. But uh, in, in, this in this case, they, uh, they knew that uh, it, is, it is said to be known that the Israelis knew this was planned because they have the best surveillance system they in the do, world. Supposedly. And uh, so I, I have no trouble believing that they knew about it. But uh, I, I, you, since you just can't know the details because I had, I had a hard time that uh, <laughs> trying to accept the fact that our policies before World War II actually maneuvered us into the war for good reasons, you know, to get us into, into war against Japan. And uh, so I have trouble believing people would do that if they know it's going to go to war. But, uh, you, you know, there's so much deliberate bombing and, and, and escalation. Uh, otherwise, uh, if they didn't have a goal, cons type of conspiratorial goal, uh, they have to be pretty stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe it's a combination. Uh, yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I just want to bring up one small thing before we close out because we're getting close to our time. Um, I noticed here that Tony Ions gave us five bucks. We appreciate that, kicking in a little bit of money. Very kind of you. Apologies to others in the past few days that have, uh, and I hadn't seen it on my screen. That's a long story. But uh, if you put up that last clip, I just want to bring up one final thing, which is uh, Gonzalo Lira, born in California, American journalist living in Kharkov. He died over the weekend. Now, this is from an article I wrote about it. Uh, as an update to RPI subscribers, and I'll put a link in and ask you to please subscribe for free. Of course, we'll never share your information with anyone. Uh, but anyway, born in California. Now, I, I listened to a lot of his uh, broadcasts. He was living in Kharkov, and what he did is he was seeing what was happening around him. Now, this is the time when Zelensky was sainted. He was, uh, he was uh, you know, more worshipped probably than Jesus Christ here in the U.S. when he came to D.C., um, and, he, and Gonzalo was saying, hang on a minute, things are a little different here than they're being reported in the U.S. I'm here on the ground. This isn't the plucky little democracy that we're hearing about. <coughs> things are not going that well. Well, what happens to him is he was arrested. Uh, he was arrested twice. The second time they arrested him, he detailed the torture that he suffered under his U Ukrainian captors. Uh, he tried to escape, and they caught him a third time. They put him in a, in a dungeon, and sadly he died over the weekend, he had apparently contracted double pneumonia in October. He had a collapsed lung. He was not being treated for it whatsoever. Uh, and he finally, sadly, died at age 55. And the point that I made in my article, Dr. Paul, is that the State Department or the Biden administration could have saved this American's life with one phone call. We understand you're holding an American uh, who has been jailed for justifying the Russian attack i.e. criticizing the narrative, we would like you to let him go because regardless of how you feel about what he says, we believe the values that we're, <laughs> that we're professing would allow him to say whatever he wants. Nobody did that. Victoria Newland, I'm sure, sat there gleefully, joyfully watching him die, and that's what happened. It's sick. Yeah. <clears throat> you can't uh, rationalize and say, well, those are the Ukrainians, and they have a record of, <clears throat> of being careless with civil liberties. But it was a combination. They wouldn't have done that without the, you know, the permission and the encouragement from the U.S. <clears throat> and that is the case. You know, in, uh, it, it be, besides, uh, you, you know, 
we're, we silence people here. We participate in this. We participated in Assange and a lot of key people around the world, and we've assassinated people. Both of the poli our political parties have assassinated foreigners because we didn't like their activities. And in this country, oh, they don't they don't shoot everybody and they don't put everybody in prison, but they cancel them. They destroy their lives, and uh, they do get in prison too for uh, other reasons, uh, you know. But that that to, to me is. <clears throat> really a sad story and uh, that's why I think uh, a little bit less of globalism where we operate and think we own the world because you know if, let's say things go badly for the United States uh, Empire and the Empire disappears and we and we don't have the, the wealth and we don't have the reserve currency in the world somebody else is going to do it it's that it's the principle of the whole thing who should be taking care of it should it be uh, you, you know our, our local government our federal government our state government the world government the United Nations everybody else how about how about responsibility being on the individual but that's uh, that's selfish you think it the individuals get to make all they get to keep their own money oh my goodness where are you guys coming from <laughs> so well I, I I'm, I'm done but I would just uh, before I forget help us for free by hitting like and by hitting subscribe let us grow our channel it's easy to do and we appreciate it so over very to you, very good <clears throat> and I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report there are a lot of problems going on there's an election going on in Iowa uh, some interesting things will happen, but the world problems will not be solved in a short period of time because I still think they're looking in the wrong places. They're looking at just very, very you know, varying the principle of interventionism and management of people, and it doesn't work. The argument ought to be, should there be any government telling individuals how they should live and what they should do with their lives? And uh, as long as the rule of non-aggression is followed, people ought to be allowed to take care of themselves, keep what they earn, and also suffer the consequences if they make mistakes. And they cannot always crawl to the government and say, I tried it, I can't help you, so help me out. No, freedom, freedom demands responsibility for assuming that you take care of your own problems and, and, and also enjoy the blessings of liberty. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.